let me introduce you to Marco and, and Marco to so, uh, Marco is uh, like I would say the biggest or one of the biggest Italian influence oh, influencers. Maybe you don't like the word, but no, it's, it's okay to me. I, I'm more, most concerned on, on the biggest. Uh, <laughs> I don't okay, know well, about, but... the best then uh, <laughs> oh. is the Italian Antonopoulos. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so he's very he's very technical. Um, he's a programmer, so he's a developer. Oh, and he's Marco got, Richard he's got glasses. Is, he's got really clever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and Richard Marco is one of the gurus in the vacation rental industry. He's been there since forever. So he's, he's one of those guys you can't miss in a, at any conference. He's always somewhere talking. Oh. It's not because of his I British know. accent. Makes him sound always, clever. I'm always hiding somewhere, Marco, uh, trying to figure out the next uh, the next big thing. Oh yeah, and and Marco uh, is in blockchain. One of the very few guys <laughs> who understands blockchain in the industry. So good. Yeah. Yeah. So. I was uh, I was taking uh, Bitcoin eight years ago on my uh, one of my first one of my first booking sites and. I wish I'd kept a few of them. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I hear that a lot lately. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure somewhere there's a lot of hard drives with a lot of Bitcoin on around the world. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I've even heard there's people that is uh, dumpster diving uh, on landfills and other places to scavenge hard drives to get if there is any sort of password wallet or whatever on it. Well. Yeah. Is the, the, the funny moment in history where, where everybody who bought and kept some is happy and all those who sold are not. It's true. <laughs> right. Yeah. You never well, lose if you, if you, if you don't yeah, sell. Never. As, you're saying it's, uh, it's 2020 vision history, isn't it? So we could all have been much smarter if we had to live our lives again in the same time zone. Yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. You know, um, yeah, this is really, really interesting. This I'm, um, I've been loving the Discord channel conversation. And what's going on? Uh, it's fascinating to see crypto tech people all of a sudden jumping into the holiday rental, vacation, short term rental world and trying to rebuild what they did in recent times and in, in the same and different ways. Uh, and no one has yet cracked it. No one has figured yeah. No. So it's I'm pretty sure there is a way of doing it. It just needs to figure yeah. out. So fine. Uh, sooner or later, just as a matter of chance, somebody will get it right. Yeah, it, it, it's the strategy attack to necessary strategy attached to the guest as much as anything else. Everybody you know we've all been managers and owners of properties and done rentals and we're all very concerned about ourselves but actually should we really be concerned about the person who wants to how to, how to engage those people i've got a dog down here whining every now and then by the way okay <laughs> so we have moria she's just wrote to me she's gonna log in now um so let's wait a minute okay it looks like we are live in uh, in youtube welcome Everyone to this uh, chat, uh, which was uh, prepared by, by Richard, uh, to be talking today about the experiment. Let's call it an experiment, so we keep uh, <laughs> we keep expectations down, and um, about the booking DAO, so a, a booking platform managed by by people and uh, through through a decentralized autonomous organization software based on uh, Web three slash blockchain. We're gonna explain a little bit what that means. So we're gonna keep to try to keep this not too technical, even if all of us here are probably a bit too technical, but uh, we'll try. All right. And then we have Marco Crotta. Marco is a, an expert uh, um, teacher, I would say, uh, in Italy about blockchain. He has a, a very very nice uh, uh, YouTube channel called Blockchain Cafe. And uh, so let's uh, let's start, uh, Richard. Why don't you start? So, yeah, because you proposed that, so I let you start. 
Yeah, okay. Well, well it, it actually it all started for me back in uh, the VRMA in 2016. Uh, and, and very simple reason was that uh, I attended a conference that was sponsored by a single company, remained nameless, that actually uh, was influencing the entire sector. And it became very apparent that um, there was significant control. Uh, we called it a siloed effect at that point in terms of inventory and accessing inventory. So nothing much has changed since that point in time, apart from the fact that blockchain associated cryptocurrency, decentralization, Web3 is getting more and more traction, more and more noise. Uh, and on top of that, we're beginning to see, we're beginning to see uh, phone applications. I mean, we're all on these phone apps chatting to each other all the time as well. And we're seeing, uh, let's call them cohorts of individual people beginning to aggregate together to make group decisions. So early days of uh, decentralization as yet, but I can see that it is going to come and it's going to be powered by technology. So I've been watching the Discord conversation and, and it's a kind of typical conversation you would normally have uh, about how to develop a platform to make bookings. I uh, see, I see Hi, Moria, sorry to interrupt you. She's here. Hi, Moria. Hi, how are you? How are you? So, so we, we, we come back to this position whereby everybody's trying to read and it's a very bad place to start because what we should be looking at is uh, what's happening guest centric and what's happening at supply and, and as Mariah will know it, it's a very very segmented market in different profiles of properties and guests so there has to be a starting point also has to be a model that matches the guests the owners and one of the mentions in the discord channel is subscriptions and crikey i can go back 20 years and know i was paying 69 pounds subscription well it's like 80 euros and i'd get 30 bookings worth 25 thousand pounds i mean that's fantastic value you can't really do that these days it's a very, very tough thing to do unless you actually generate bookings because even people won't really really small amounts of money unless they ex expect to get a booking so i have a little bit of a theory thinking about this in terms of what is possible in this situation but i mean I, you know i could talk all afternoon uh, but that's kind of an overview of how i got here and i'm sitting here and i'm a signatory to the trips and i think what trips is doing is uh is the beginning of the evolution of this this type of business and it's got great people in it and none of them appear to want to make millions out of uh, floating the coin on an exchange and running off into the ether <laughs> so so yeah great bunch of people and a great idea it just needs to start somewhere great uh so moria was telling me she only has 20 minutes so um if you agree, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you something now, Moria. And uh, you, of, of the four people here, you are probably uh, the one which is most focused on sharing economy as a concept. And uh, and also you you're not too much into blockchain. Now, of course, things may you know I don't know exactly. Um, you come from a perspective which is really important, like which is not a technological perspective. It's not okay. We have a technology. Let's see what we can do with it. Richard was referring where he went to the wheel. You are more like, okay, we have a problem, let's solve it. So my question for you is, why is this interesting for you? Um, what were we trying to do here? So your market is, is a luxury, so that's a sector. And uh, as far as I understand, one of the biggest problems you have is, okay, paying a 15, 20% commission is just too much. On, on thousands or tens of thousands of, of dollars for, for one booking and also payments. I remember your your question in, at the Vacation Rental World Summit a few years ago uh, to, to Booking.com, if, if I'm not wrong. Like, it, I don't remember the question actually, but it was like about we're moving so much money and there was a limit or something. But anyway, why, and they, why? And they wouldn't change. They wouldn't change their, um, their attitude of accepting only instant booking. All right, there is the booking thing, which is exactly not, not your model, right? If I want to book a villa for a week and it's like $50,000, maybe I don't want to instant book, right? Maybe I want to ask you questions before. Exactly. Okay. 
So again, why? What is interesting for you here? Uh, what what kind of problems do you think we may together solve? So first of all, as you know, I'm also a specialist for the sharing economy and everything that has to do with sharing platforms uh, is, in, is it's in my interest and. Uh, and I'm following uh, different kind of methods uh, in the space of sharing economy for a long time and talking about it, etc. So I'm there personally, first of all, before before even, uh, you know, my, my role in uh, as a founder and the CMO of, uh, of uh, Smiling House. Um, so my interest is double. Uh, about the sharing economy, uh, I, I'm, uh, and, and um, being busy, if you remember that we even invite you to speak one time about uh, sharing economy and currency in, in Tel Aviv, in Gesti, and the, the connection between this and uh, in our industry of uh, hospitality is something that I, I see as uh, not only uh, visionary, uh, but also um, something is uh, will 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 have to to come a phase that will have to come. As I mentioned before, I see you as a, somebody who sees things um, ahead of time, and that's why it's very important to me to be close to you, Luca, and to to the things you're doing now for Smiling House. This is a big issue, and if if the if this you know this if this idea of what is speaking here can can solve part of the of, of the issue we have with the OTAs with the normal ways of, of receiving bookings, uh, for us, it's already uh, a great solution. So as I mentioned, um, our guests would like to talk to us more. They would like to share with us more. Uh, we are hosting people that uh, spending quite a bit of money in, on the luxury accommodation. I would say that a lot of them are in a position to be open for different uh, currencies as well. Some of them might be a holder of, uh, of, of ad, other uh, cryptocurrencies and, and, and will be happy. And we've been asked many times if we, if, if we can um, get paid in, in a different format than just a, a wire transfer. Um, and another thing is the sharing between the community, as mentioned uh, here, uh, we will be able more to share information. Uh, in, instead of the of the funny position that I have to uh, reinvent a uh, smiling house mm -hmm. all the time. So every time we, we talk about managed by the community, the image that comes to our mind is the hippies, right? And so they're managing little money and they are smoking weed and that's community managed time, but things. But what's actually happening is billions of dollars managed by basically Discord channels. So people who don't even know each other. Some of them are anonymous and everything stays together because the trust is not built on the fact that we know each other, that we develop a relationship, paper contract enforced by the law, but because the trust is managed by the internet. Cryptocurrencies are an incredible tool to manage trust. Like I don't need to trust you because the token is taking care of, of the security here. And I know I didn't explain it at all, that's why I'm asking Marco. Maybe Marco, you can help me uh, convey the message on why we can have, and I love this, rules without rulers. So, oh, and Moria has to go. No. Oh, sorry, you can see your hand. <laughs> sorry, I saw you doing like this. I thought you were going. <laughs> Apologies. So, uh, 
we, we always think that to have order, you need a strong per person on top and then a, a hierarchy. And what's actually happening on the internet is that the, the biggest order, the, the highest level of order comes when there are no, no hierarchy. So it's no pyramid um, organization, right? Exactly. So, Marco, what do you think? How, how can you spend this better than me? Uh, I would say that um, I would start with um, the one word that you said before, trust. Um, trust is uh, twisting his meaning, especially in the, the blockchain platforms, in, uh, in the, the, in the centralized web. The trust is actually starting to have um, sort of, of a bad reputation of itself. I mean, when we talk about trust in, uh, in, in, in my environment, in, in the blockchain, we're talking about something bad. Um, this does not have anything to do with people-to-people uh, um, -people trust, person-to-person -person trust is not something like this. It's like uh, the trust that you can put in a contract in business is, is that type of trust. And sadly, the thing is that we have to acknowledge that most of the time when trust is involved in some sort of um, business uh, or, or litigation, well, usually the trust is the door to which we have problems like uh, scum, like theft, like uh, anything else. So ev every con artist is trained to gain your trust before anything else. So the, the, the magnificent role of the blockchain that I see is removing trust from whatever you are trying to do. And the thing is, we are replacing this element with something that is definitely stronger. We are replacing trust with mathematics. And the idea is mathematics is, is open, is transparent. Uh, it's the same for every person in the world and everybody can check it. And that's the beauty of the blockchain. It's removing any middleman uh, that you have in any sort of business. So the project that you, um, uh, you named before as, are exactly an example of that. P people that can gather around with, uh, with an idea around the project and have the project running and remove all the elements that they have to put like um who we elect to do this who will be the right person to do that um the answer that we gave is not a person it's code because you cannot corrupt code you cannot change code you cannot uh, bribe it um and you can definitely see that you can actually remove the trust by having code because you can ex expect the code you can see what it does and every single time you see the information by yourself you don't have to trust anybody anymore trust is a um, is an issue because you have to put trust when you don't have information when you don't have control but since the blockchain puts the people in control and provides them with all the information trust disappears as an issue and what remains are rules community that gathers around those rules and rules that makes those community work the way they are expected to the only the only yeah. thing is that there's a, a big process of learning and uh, and educating so uh this is this is a kind of um, of something that we have to take in consideration beside the the, the 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 idea beside the the tech part of the of the idea um most of them of the of the people in our industry sorry hello yeah there's phone calls here all the time uh most of the people in our industry will need a, a big chapter of learning uh in order to um in order to um uh, to even consider or understand the idea of what we're speaking here about so i would say that one of the challenges will be how to serve it in a in a easier way in, in a, you know that somebody can chew on it and feel that it's um something that he can understand because uh the the, the thing that people um naturally doing when they don't uh, understand something is they becoming against it so one of the of the first things that i would i would put in mind is how to serve it in a the most easy way um you know like using the word code is 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 right it's good uh, but we will have to think about something else that because some people hear the word code, code and immediately they are not in the room anymore. Um, another interesting uh, thing to, to, to just look at it and to, to give it a little bit of um, a familiar thing 
and and and, and with this uh, little example unfortunately i will have to leave you and be happy to jump on another call uh, is that switzerland had a cryptocurrency a uh, trustful um, a currency existing already from the 70s and it's called veer and it's a legitimate currency between um um a business uh, in in switzerland every bank uh, would accept it and and uh, ev almost in every store they will accept it as well it's not as popular it's looking like the the platform looking very very old but uh the idea that uh, something like this uh, as a community as a business um guarantee between uh, professionals um business people uh, it happened in switzerland already 40 years ago maybe can be uh a, a kind of a thing that give the people the trust that uh, this is not just a crazy new idea of some kind of uh, entrepreneurs uh in our system and uh, i will try to get some information about it and send it to you uh just as a kind of um of, of something to 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 think about it's uh it's gaining uh, it's bringing a lot of trust because uh people uh, are happy to get close to new ideas but with some kind of um of evidence or uh, you know that it's not too new to 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 make it too risky um even though of course our idea here is much uh, beyond uh, uh this example but uh, it's a good uh, it's a good little thing to to take in uh, consideration guys i'm so sorry it's just kids time and i get their their friends calling my phone all the time okay. i'll be happy to to jump on another call maybe later on in the evening in, in one in one evening if it's possible Okay, thank you Maria for for your time. Yeah, sure. And please keep me posted about uh, all the all the the great things that you're discussing further in this uh, in this meeting. Perfect. So, bye guys. Bye. 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 bye, -bye. Uh Luca, may, yeah. may I try to answer Moria? Sure, sure. Okay, um, I totally agree with what she said because it's something that I see every single day. People, uh, when you talk to them about blockchain, about crypto, it sounds too complicated. Uh, it's shady, especially in Italy. We have a lot of uh, negative press coverage of putting, putting out a lot of, uh, say, fake news about Bitcoin and other stuff. Um, and actually, the, the natural um, reaction of somebody to something so weird, so complicated, is they, they, they refrain from it, they, they get away from it. But um, uh, first, uh, history. Uh, there was this video, funny video, that was back from the early 80s of uh, an anchorman that was inter interviewing two uh, persons that were, how do you send an email? And those yeah, person yeah. was were, were like, um, yes, it's very easy. Well, you turn on the computer, then you plug the modem into the receiver, and then you dial the number of the IS ISP. Then when the connection is up, you have to start this program, and then you have to do this and do that. It took 14 minutes to start writing the first chapter of the, that email. And, and now it's something that we do, like uh, open a phone, press a button, and that's it. Um, this is going to happen. Eventually, this is going to happen slowly, maybe. We are already 12 years in this technology, and from the beginnings, I assure you, we've made uh, giant steps forward for mass adoption and to make things easy. Uh, the second thing is uh, um, people will love this if you put them in, in the right perspective or you make a look at it the, 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 the right way. Just to make an example, my mother, she never touched a computer in her life she was not able to do anything like this. But uh, when I got my two daughters, uh, she was like, uh, maybe I need a new phone, but you have to teach me how to use it. Uh, and it was, I have a hell of an evening that time because it, you can imagine somebody who never touched a, a, even a, a normal cell phone trying to use a smartphone with all the WhatsApp and other stuff. She, it, it, I was getting crazy that evening. And after a month, she calls me and out of nothing, she says, um, I need a new phone plan because I'm running out of gigabytes. And if I use the gigabytes on the social media, downloading movies and, and this and that and pictures, then I will get out of credit. So we need to change this and that. And it was like, how do you even figure out all those words, which is, are not in your vocabulary? How do you, did you learn all those stuff? And it was just, I want to see the pictures of my granddaughters. And that was enough. Uh, I want to see that. I want to share that with my friends. So I, I got my mother, which is in her seventies. Uh, she was looking like a teenager, and I, I, it was crazy. But it, when you have the right drive, and actually money is one a very good drive, uh, people start to 
take interest into the thing and that those things become a little easier if you have the right motivation. And one easy way, then I, I, I'll shut up, I promise. Um, when I have, when I teach courses um, uh, and I have the classes about blockchain and cryptocurrency for companies, one exercise that I always make them do is download a demo version of a wallet and let's exchange a fake cryptocurrency to get a feeling of what it feels like. Uh, the process is 100% the same. The only thing is you risk nothing if you make the, the wrong move. You don't lose money. This is not actually real money, but they start to have a feeling and the game kicks in uh, and they have fun. And the moment they have fun and they say, oh, this is like uh, cherry points or uh, uh, Mario Kart's uh, score, whatever. It has no economic value, but it's points. It's, it's, it's a prize. Uh, it's bait, basically. So they start having fun and say, okay, can we see the real thing now? And that's the moment I say, okay, we got them. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, yeah, I've got two takeaways, three takeaways. One is um, everybody's smoking weed these ways, Luca. So it's gone mad in the US. Um, trust, yeah, trust is, is actually what drives OTA's bookings. Exposure and trust. So there's a massive amount of uh, corporate trust and uh, reliability, I suppose. And, f and they're frictionless. And they spend a lot of time doing that. And the third thing is what you just said. You're absolutely correct. If um, people have a lot of trouble in this uh, immediate move into any form of cryptocurrency or blockchain uh, understanding, and, and it is quite a headache. And it's quite a headache because most of the people involved in it are still very techie and they're talking techie and they're really interested in the techie. But most people in the real world outside my window here really don't care. They just want to go to the shop and buy some bread and they just want to pay for it easily. So, so you need to kind of overcome all those things. So, so trust mathematical. I love that. I think that's just a genius way of actually explaining trust particularly if it's backed by, by group decision-making as well. So that, that's a great message. In, in terms of the, the whole concept of a booking platform, um, this is kind of what, this is kind of why I wanted a Zoom call, to, so to, to see how everybody's mind works towards that. Mariah's working in an industry where she has to have inquiries because they're very high-value bookings, and she won't want to, she likes wire transfers because they're very secure. Other means of uh, payments come with very high fees on credit cards, and everybody worries a little bit about transferring uh, Bitcoin between wallets and things. It's, it, uh, I think we come back to this. I think, I think Trips has been down a few channels recently in terms of can it do this, can it do that? Is it good for loyalty points? Is it good for any time of uh, other types of benefits? I think something's happening in the industry at large right now. And one is this decentralization. There's, a, there's also an inflection point from COVID, which has made everybody rethink how they're, uh, they're working, where they're going, how they're operating, what they, they're looking at, where the costs are, where the expenses are. Uh, and I'm, I'm pretty sure, I mean, let's go back to the OTAs. You have to respect the OTAs because they've done an incredible job of getting where they are. And, and the business models are there to make money for their shareholders. You, no one can argue that. That's just where they are and they're part of the marketing mix. There are plenty of people who actually get direct bookings. And they get direct bookings because they're pretty good at SEO, they're in a very specific location or a very specific type of product. But there's also, and I'll probably get shot, I can see a missiles coming into my office right now, because a lot of people actually go to the OTAs and then they start searching for referrals. And these referrals are a massive in volume. There's, there's no doubt about that on a global basis. These referrals to the original sites are huge. You know, and this leakage that comes off OTAs, which is why their models are as they are, and, and you have to respect them for what they're doing, um, means that there's a dissatisfaction from the supply side of things and also a dissatisfaction to a degree from the guest side of things based on price. So there's, there's two things in there. One is referrals. And if you're a, if you're a supplier 
you want to make more money. There's no, you know, we see hashtag direct, it's New York Times yesterday, you know, it, it's everywhere at the moment. You, you try to build your business around a, a rich marketing mix, which, which includes direct bookings. And a lot of people will rely on referrals and a lot of people will gain the systems and say, well, you know, they'll be doing things like typing their own phone numbering with letters into Airbnb and stuff. So it comes direct. So a direct platform could actually start with the referrals. And if somebody comes directly to the site from a referral or directly sent there from a, let's say it's an Airbnb owner, and they say, well, you know, if you want to book directly on trips, then it doesn't cost, it doesn't cost you anything. It's cheaper. It doesn't cost me anything, essentially. But then you have to figure out how trips actually has to, to run and, and, and have money attached to it, just to allow it to, to grow, if nothing else. And I'm pretty sure there's ways of doing that. And, and that I don't think the, subs, the traditional subscription approach is a very good idea because people give you let's say 100 euros, and they don't get anything for a year. Whereas if you gave them 100 euros and said every time you refer a direct booking and you block that, then, you know, uh, let's say I'm a supplier, I give you 100 euros and it sits there. I buy trips with it, for example. It sits there. And if a booking comes through, it comes off that 100 euros. A fee is attached to it. Or maybe there's a fee attached to it a tiny fee every time their calendar is blocked on a third party system. So a few cents each time the calendar is booked. But it, so the opportunity for trips isn't as great, but essentially it's made a few cents for the, having the opportunity to make direct bookings. So we're talking small amounts of money here, but it's the small amounts of money that start things moving. Large amounts of money seldom get things moving because people want to see traction before anything else. So there's all sorts of ways of, of strapping it together, I think. And I think if there's missiles coming in now, I think the, uh, the referrals part of it is, is a very good place to start. Now, if you look at somebody like Mariah, she will be doing as much marketing as she possibly can, but it's a very, um, it's a very rarefied atmosphere, very expensive properties, you know, and other people will be marketing them as well. So for her, another opportunity to get a booking for a small amount of money that she doesn't, this sits resident in trips until something happens is quite a nice way of getting it because you then have to figure out the, the transaction methodology. For her, it, it's an inquiry. You can bill for inquiries. You can bill trips for inquiries. You can bill for anything for an inquiry. Inquiries are like gold dust for people who actually got high value properties. For the smaller customers, instant book in urban areas is, you know, it, it's the standard and it's hard to move away from that. So I think there is ways of modeling it. I just don't think you need to reinvent the entire process of listing and filtering and displays and all this sort of stuff. That comes as part of the, the group collective in terms of why is this listed there and why is this property doing better than that property? And, and there's no rocket science there. Good priced properties of quality in the right place are the ones that always book first, you know. So there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff already done. It's just how you model this to get traction initially, um, and how you how you structure the the subscription because it's not a subscription you're going to pay every year. It's a subscription you would pay to have something actually happen within that environment that you're involved in to help grow it. So just thoughts to, to add in there, you know? Yeah. Um, the, the way I try to, to organize this is to, you know, when we start the trips, like, okay, we're going to do the fully fledged OTA, but on the blockchain. And, uh, later it became apparent that this, two, the technology is not there yet. Uh, a fully transactional booking platform where every booking is paid in crypto is definitely where we want to get and, th and there we will get or somebody we get. I mean, it is going that way. Of course, crypto is superior to fiat or credit cards or banks online. This is out of the question. So that's where we're going to end up at the end, a few years from now. 
But my question was like, okay, what can we do now which brings value to the host and to the guests? And now there's not much we can do still. What we can do is organize ourselves uh, in a decentralized manner. This is possible through a DAO. This is actually happening, as I was mentioning, and Marco confirmed. Uh, but bookings, no, it's, it's too early. Uh, people don't have wallets, they don't have crypto. So the, we start this way. You can put your phone number, you can put your email, you can put your website, you can put your link to your Airbnb or your booking, and the booking can happen out of the platform. So there's complete freedom of communication, which has uh, a positive aspect and a negative aspect. The positive aspect is that if guests and hosts have to talk, they're just going to talk. There's no censorship like in the OTAs. So they can figure out, especially for longer term bookings and for specific bookings related to remote work, remote working guests, they can you know, get to a point in which they understand uh, if this property is good for this guest. Um, and the and the bad part is that there's no, the platform is not giving any protection to the guest or to the host. We're going back to home away old style, right? Where you pay to the host and you are completely in the handle in the hands of the host. So this is an inferior model which has been surpassed by modern OTAs. But again, this is what we can do today. So uh, I'm not so focused right now on how the platform will work because. The, the, the new thing we can do is not the platform. Uh, the new thing we can do is how we organize ourselves as an industry. So if we jump into this DAO and we start putting a bit of money into this honeypot in the middle and we find ways to, uh, to budget this money, to assign some budget to a task and to another task com in a completely decentralized way, then we can theoretically build 10 different portals on top of this DAO. One for villas, one for urban, one for every vertical we can think of, right? Um, so it, it's a very big uh, project just to organize a DAO, right? Let's try to see if we can replicate what has been done in DeFi and manage money and decisions in a decentralized way. That's where we start. And as we go ahead and we experiment this thing and we learn, because we're gonna onboard people on, on crypto to do that, uh, the technology is gonna go ahead, right? It's gonna, it's gonna evolve and be, it, every year there's gonna be more things we can do. And at the end, we're gonna be able to have the fully fledged uh, OTA if that's what destiny has for us, because you know maybe maybe it's not the, the central big OTA is not the, the answer, right? Maybe it's just a set of open protocols which people use from through their through the websites, who knows, right? So uh, I'm pretty sure that people, when they will come in into this project, they're gonna say, okay, the booking platform sucks, right? It's nothing compared to the OTAs. And that's true. There's no way we can do something like that. But the way we organize ourselves, this is revolutionary. That's the interesting part. So um, I'm pretty sure that we're gonna have fun. I, I brought this in the articles because it's incredibly liberating to find a way to organize ourselves without a central point of failure, which could be a startup, for instance, could be uh, trips as a startup would be a point of failure, right? If we close down, everything falls down. What we're gonna launch, even if, you know, it's, it's gonna go ahead, even if we, we get out of this, because it's self-managed. I don't know if that makes sense. So the, the, the product we're selling today is not the platform, is uh, onboarding on the blockchain, um, because so far, pe most people haven't onboarded because Bitcoin is heavy. It's almost a religion. Bitcoin is going to save the world, right? Bitcoin is going to solve all the financial problems people don't even know they have, right? So everybody was like, oh, okay, Bitcoin is just too much for me. I just want to go to the supermarket and buy some bread. Can I buy bread with Bitcoin? No. Okay, I don't care, right? <laughs> so we're going to give them uh, a reason to get on Web3. Like, let's try to organize ourselves. That's a wallet. That's the, that's the seed worth. Uh, buy some crypto through this website. We're going to teach people. It's going to be incredibly heavy, difficult, but people are going to get something out of this, right? It, it's a, a healthy and safe way to be on board on Web3 rather than go on Binance because you heard that this token went 10x 
and next day you buy it and it goes half, right? I don't know if you guys agree with this approach. Yeah, I mean, I, because I live in this world of supply and, uh, and guests as well, I mean, I'm constantly transfixed by it, of course, because you need both to have that environment to start with. So whatever message comes across, it has to be simple initially, uh, without any doubt at all. Otherwise, it will never get sufficient traction. Um, in terms of the cryptocurrency bit, yeah, you're right. I've got a Binance screen up right now. It's just a crazy world, you know. Um, can you just explain a little more about that for, for, for me and for people listening as well in terms of how you, you see that? As soon as you say cryptocurrency, you've got like 2,000 tokens out there. You've got hundreds of coins. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Like, it's like the internet. Oh, there's the internet thing. And then like people go, oh, that's only about pornography and criminals, right? <laughs> that, that was the first approach because the TV told us that the internet, the internet was full of just pornography and, and, and criminality. Right, it's the Silly. same thing. But if you tell them it's not like that, well, yeah. So what is it, right? And the, the answer is, well, it's just speculation. It's just speculation at the end of the day. Today, ninety-nine percent of activity is speculation in the good way, the bad way. But it's it's buying tokens and selling tokens and um, experimenting things so that we build an infrastructure, right? Uh, Bitcoin is a different story, but people don't understand money, so they don't understand Bitcoin. We, you can't onboard people by explaining Bitcoin because they don't understand money, right? Most of them. And I didn't understand money until I got into Bitcoin. So just, just come, back, come back to a practical part of it for somebody who's a supplier right now who knows nothing about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, or well, whatever. What, we, how, how many currencies are you talking about? What, what it story? doesn't matter. No, that's the point. We're not going to even talk about Bitcoin or, 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 or currencies. We're going to tell them, look, we have this... We're launching this website where you can, you as a guest can book for a few months or you can book a place with a remote working friendly environment. So a desk, a fast internet or whatever. And instead of going through Airbnb where you pay 10, 20% commissions, well, you, you as a guest will see that you pay 10% commissions, but if you book for two or three months, it's a lot of money, right? And, and I know that people who do this, digital nomads or all these new digital nomads made by COVID, they try to skip the, the booking platforms because they feel the pain, right? So instead of going to Airbnb and trying then to get directly to the, to the, to the host, go straight in, in our booking platform. Every host is there, is ready to welcome you for, for a long period and they have fast internet, whatever, right? So it's a solution to a problem you already have, which is booking a place with these characteristics specifically. If you're booking a place with three days, Go to booking.com, go to Airbnb, it's better. At this stage, it's better, it's easier. I, I wouldn't use my platform, this platform. I would use booking or Airbnb, right? So for this specific vertical, we give this ease of use in a way, right? And pre-selected uh, listings, which are welcoming long-term and are uh, already a very, Clear example, you can see how fast the internet is. So if you put, put your apartment, you have to do a speed test and take a picture or screenshot on the speed test. So when I book and I know I'm, I'm getting 10 megabits, 20 megabits, 100 megabits, or I see the picture of, of the corner office, right? I have a chair, I don't have to work on the kitchen table. So that's the solution we give to them. So the guest doesn't even have to worry about the DAO, right? They can join if you like, but the DAO is mostly for the hosts, my opinion. And to the host, we say something different. For this kind of guests, which are not served well by the OTAs, because as Moria was saying, verticals, are, niches are not always well, well served, right? For this kind of guests, try our platform and pay the subscription or pay money to get in, $100, 100 euro a year, right? Or for the first year, then we'll see. And you're going to get some tokens in exchange, governance tokens. They're not speculation that they don't have a value right you use them to vote on how we spend the money we collected say so which money the money you put so you put hundred dollars other people put hundred dollars and then together we decide what to do with it right it's not me deciding it's not trips deciding it's not richard deciding it's voted in a governance with a governance vote based on the tokens 
And, and let's try this out. This could be the framework for building huge corporations, huge, sorry, huge projects, much bigger than Airbnb, much bigger than booking. Because as Marco will teach us, flat organizations scale better. Uh, hierarchical organizations, they reach a point where they lose contact with reality. And we've seen this happening all the time, right? So maybe, maybe Marco can tell us something about that, uh, flat organization. Well, why a flat, or do you agree that a flat organization can become 100 times bigger than any OTA we've ever seen and much, much faster? Well, okay, I'm not a big expert on, on OTA and on, on traveling. Oh, well, the corporations you can But you know, what I can see be, is yeah. that um, the, we have a new paradigm. We have a new way of doing things. I don't want to say it is better than the previous one. It's just different. And by being different, of course, we will have aspects in which is going to be better and other which is going to be worse. And as you said, uh, it depends what you have to offer, what the, your, your, your guests need, uh, what the, the people need, and they pick up what better suits them. One of the things that I, I, I see happening is that this type of model is going to gain uh, more and more traction in the next year because one of the things that COVID told us is that our society in every aspect has to be rely uh, reliable, has to be resilient. And when an organization has too many heavy structures, it tends to jam, it tends to crank up and it, they, they, they tend not to move anymore. While if you have something like, I, I would not even call it flat, I would call it liquid or, or on uh, under some, uh, some certain point of view because you don't have one head thinking for all and taking all the decisions for all you have groups of people so in a certain way on on a social point of view we are actually mimicking what is actually happening on a blockchain on a technological point of view you have a lot of people which are making decisions for the best so you have uh, uh, you, you basically have to set up a set of rules that make things like a uh, win-win situation where you can actually try to make the best for you, but by doing that, you also have to bring together what is best for the whole community. It's not an easy task, it's not, it's not simple, but I, I think this can be done. Or, or even simpler than that, uh, those who make it will survive, those who don't won't. So. Uh, in, in the long run, I expect this thing happening because it's lean, it's faster, it's cheaper, uh, it's easier to manage. And I, I, I see that the results that, you are, that we are having, for example, uh, if you compare new DeFi to centralized finance, uh, they, sh they show us a bit of the difference of those two different ways of doing things. Uh, the Web3 way with DeFi and the classic way with finance. And it's different. You can even compare the two things. And there is a reason why a lot of the finance world is moving toward DeFi, is looking very closely at what DeFi means because they see a lot of opportunities there. I don't think they will change and all the, the, the financial world will turn to DeFi, but I guess the, the share of the DeFi on the market is going to grow. Um, and as you said before, Who's going to teach people about uh, cryptocurrencies, about how to open a wallet? Uh, I guess they will teach them themselves because when Bitcoin is going to be even more popular, people are going to uh, think about it. Um, one thing, uh, this, uh, we have uh, this joke between me and my friends in the, in the last two weeks about how many calls you got from people that you were not, uh, didn't have heard from in the last <laughs> years that are just calling you up because of, hey, uh, how about the things about that Bitcoin stuff? Can you tell me about it? About? <laughs> and I, I think this is going to bring even more people interested in this thing. So they will teach themselves. So Bitcoin is going to be probably our uh, our commercial, our uh, uh, our ID and people will start to look at it. Also, if the people you are talking to are digital nomads, uh, I guess they are even more inclined to this type of thing. So you're starting from the, the easy part. People who are already on the right mentality, who are just, uh, um, they all live 
uh, on their MacBooks. So they, they are tech savvy. So they know how, they're not afraid of using a computer, making a uh, uh, digital payment uh, uh, on the internet. Think, do you remember 20 years ago, how many people were afraid of using their credit card on the internet? Yeah. Hey, it's the same thing. It's history repeating. It's, it's the same plot. Yeah. You change the landscape, you're changing the, uh, the actors, and, but the roles remain the same. And I guess a, a good deal of this history is going to repeat themselves like we had internet in, in the beginning. So uh, we are uh, probably the nomads, the first who are opening uh, those new paths. And, but I, we will find that those who work, those who don't, many won't work, many will. Those who will, will stay and will provide an alternative. So, so the, the market segment, which is the, is the, uh, is the longest stay digital nomad type environment, which is going to be more tech involved anyway. In, in uh, terms so of- two, in two things, Richard, then, then I'll let yeah. you continue. There's the longer, people come for longer periods. So yeah. they, the commissions are very painful for them. Yep. Yeah. Or, and people who need a place where they also need to work. So they need yeah, to know yeah. the speed of the internet and, and have a place. They could be people who do both things, so they come for two months to also work, or they could be people who only do one thing, they come for a long time not to work, or they come for three days, but they really need to work, so they need a, a good environment for, for working. So these, these intersections. Yeah, yeah. No, okay. No, that makes sense. Just go, I'm just trying to get into the practical parts of it, because I mean, that, that is a market segment which is kind of exploded due to COVID as well, and you know, the fact that everybody's more mobile these days. Um, what, what was the, what was the approach on the supply guest side of things then? Because obviously they're, you know, transferring what is a fairly large amounts of money, I guess, as well. The, the, the process, I'm just trying to get to the, the, the practical elements of how this thing would work in a, in, well, in a it, it has to start where the, the guest sends money to the host directly, old style with all the risks involved and with all the trust involved. Um, and then when the market is ready, so the technology is ready and the market is ready, we're going to have escrows, right? Airbnb was the first to build the escrow. We're going to have, well, this is possible today. You send crypto. Yeah, that's, that's not difficult. I mean, no, that's, but, that's relatively easy. Yeah. yeah, it's. I mean, there are already protocols for this, but sure. the problem is people don't have crypto, so you can have all the protocols you want if people don't use crypto. So when people are going to have crypto, and they're gonna be comfortable to send money to, to a robo. <laughs> and, and the robo is gonna release the money at a certain time when, when the guest decides to, then this is gonna happen. But it's not gonna to happen today, it's too early. What's the percent, Marco, of uh, people, like we don't know it, right? More or less, how many people have crypto in percent in the world or you, Europe or oh, I guess 1% it, or? Yeah, I guess it's going right, to be, so. it's hardly 1%. Okay. I think that Elon Musk made uh, a lot of noise around that. So I, I guess um, we, we saw in, in the last month uh, an increase in the number of new wallets and new accounts on, on exchanges. Uh, so it's growing slowly. Uh, and also crypto has this uh, funny uh, pusher strategy attached to it because once you start to understand it, you stay. Uh, I've seen very little people who got in, tried, and left. And if that happened, it was because they were trying to make quick money very easily, in, uh, trying to gamble on different uh, weird investments, and they lost a lot of money. So they say, it is all a scam. It's not me. I'm the expert. I'm the, I'm the one who knows it all. So I know what I was doing. It's the system that is rigged, so I'm living. Uh, but of course, I mean, we know but the guys, right? It's also this uh, famous, like, slowly then suddenly, right? So we get to a yeah. point where 1%, 2%, yeah. 4 and then 20 and then 40 and then we're in, right? We, we don't even realize everybody's got a wallet. And also, it is, uh, it is slowly shifting away from uh, the speculative market and is going more toward uh, um, a deposit for long term in a sense of, of uh, um, store of value because uh, I mean we saw that uh, I don't know which percentage of uh, new newly printed uh, US dollars are around uh, and newly printed uh, euros are around so 
uh, many investment firms start to say, well, it seems like Fiat has some issue with inflation. Uh, and when Christine Lagarde said, uh, we will never run out of money, we can print all those that we want. Uh, this was not exactly a good message for Fiat. It was an incredible good message for the bankers. Seriously. So, so just go, I mean, it's a question. If I, if I wanted to book a place for three months, say, in downtown Milan, and I was going to work there, and uh, I'd seen the property, let's say, on an OTA, I thought, well, that's crazy. I need to save myself money here. I'll, uh, I'll, go, on to, uh, I'll go on to milantrips.com or whatever it's called. Um, is there no opportunity to pay with your credit card and convert into crypto like trips and then you uh, and that is then allocated against the booking technically you can do it but that will uh, introduce a centralization point which is us so the, the thing with uh, crypto projects is when you touch fiat money so when you touch euro or dollars everything gets corrupted <laughs> it's like everything gets complicated uh, then you become responsible then you need banks then banks can close your accounts it becomes very very hard and we're going to get there because we need, um, we definitely need to let people get in with fiat money. But ideally, this is done by third parties, like companies who do only this and you just plug them in. Right. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Okay. So, question then, because many, many companies will say, well, I'll, I'll represent you. You sign up. This is fiat world. You sign up to a Stripe account. We do the. Uh, we'll hook you uh, into this into the Stripe system, and it's paid directly into your account. Presumably, if people have their own wallets, then people can buy coins, deposit them in that business's wallet as an acceptance of payment. And if you use a Tether coin, for example, or it's a USD or something, then it has a fixed value attached to it. Yeah. They can transact it, exchange it for for Bitcoin if they want or they can cash it out. So in theory, you can still do that as long as they, they've actually had that, that payment transacted into a Tether coin and put into their wallet. Now, don't ask me how the hell you do that, but I'm sure that must be a possible. Well, look, the, the easiest on ROM, uh, I've discovered this website a few days ago and I tried it and you, it's called Ramp Network, ramp.network. If you have a wallet, but you have to have a wallet, right? Yeah, Already. yeah I, th I, think have a wallet. That, I think that goes with the game though, doesn't it? That's what Marco said. Yeah, I mean, if you don't even have a wallet, what are you doing here? Right? It's like, uh, we, we can't do anything. We don't have the, it's like, you want to do Airbnb, but I don't have a computer. How can I do Airbnb without a computer? Get a computer or get a phone. Right? I mean, Airbnb hasn't gone that far to give people specific phone, whatever, you know? So people need to have a wallet. And, but if you have a wallet, you can, Go to Ramp Network, buy, I don't know, a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars of crypto, and it goes straight in your wallet, and then you can operate. So you can do your payment. It's very easy. It's much easier than going to an exchange and uh, and even do the KYC. KYC is for those who don't know, know your customer. So you yeah. have to show your picture, your passport, etc. Uh, for certain amounts and for certain countries, you can buy this crypto without KYC. Because you're already being KYC from your credit card at the bank anyway. Oh, yeah. So sometimes we are doing all this KYC for, for nothing because we, we already done it, right? So it's, it's getting easier and easier for no coiners, people don't have tokens and, and cryptocurrencies, to on-ramp on, on Web3. So we wait for them. We get ready. And then when the conditions are right, well, then things work, right? Now there's 1% people doing that. We're gonna deal with them. The others have to do the bookings out of the out of the platform. That's it. Yeah, no, I mean, people love. I mean, there is a big cohort of people who would love to have the inquiry book off platform. I mean, it's there's there's millions of them still. But it, yeah. the the software we're gonna use is allows us to also to get payments and as an escrow, right? So maybe if we decide together that that's, that's the way we're gonna do it. And, but it starts from the most open possible way. You know, like you are paying for a listing where people can find you and the money you put in, part of it is going to be spent for marketing your own place, right? And the rest is for managing and, and et cetera. So that's kind of the deal. But the real deal is, and we talked about this last time, is you are actually 
putting money in to participate in an experiment, which first of all is really informative and fun, but you're gonna learn so much from that that you're gonna be ready for Web3 because you're not ready, not about you, Richard, but like you guys are not ready for Web3. It's time, it's 2021. Uh, you know, it's really time to do that. And we give you a chance to get on Web3, skipping the whole speculative Bitcoin and, and, and crypto uh, part, right? Which scares most people away, basically. Yeah, I mean, it still needs to be explained very simply to people. I mean, mathematics and trust, I quite like that. You can't argue with the laws of physics. You know, yeah. if you fall off, if you jump off a building, you're going to hit the ground. It doesn't matter how you how you look at this. Right. Yeah. Just... Let me tell you a funny funny story here. Um, I I wanted to write a guide about how to download your wallet. Probably you know it because you follow Discord. So you you have to download your wallet, buy your crypto, etc. And I ask in Discord. Discord is our forum where we have people from all over the world. Uh, and I said, guys, who, who wants to write guides, right? And I'm going to pay you between 500 and 1,000 trips, which is, how much is it? It's a few tens of, a few tens of euros, it's not much, right? And uh, one guy said, okay, I'll do it. And he started writing this guy. Uh, he, wrote, he wrote four guides. And then I told him, why, get some trips here. Why don't you ask people to proofread it and give you feedback and you pay them? And he, and he started getting feedback and pay them. Now, how did he pay them? With a message in Discord. It's like, tip this guy one trips. It's amazing to see. Because it's, it's incredible how money becomes powerful once it gets out of the legacy system. And now we have these four guys. They're ready. We have just to put them in our, in our forum. Completely crowdsourced. I haven't written a word of it. And that shows the power of this kind of... Um, it's not synchronization. is. The, the way we cooperate, like I, I always miss the word, but the, the power of this kind of organizations. Collective, collective consciousness. It's, it's, I, I have a question about Italians, actually. I'm, I'm kind of curious because do you think that this whole collective culture, this uh, disruption, this working together, this social infrastructure plays much more to the Italian nature than it does to American nature, for example. Because it, it, it seems to. It seems to be oh, the, the reason for it. nature. Okay. Maybe we have a lot of cooperatives in Italy, as they have in Switzerland, right? So there is a bit this thing. I but, just, you know, Amer America is very look for, forward-looking, so they, they get excited for new things, which is good. We don't. We are traditionalists, right? But it's true no, that we you, like we like to do things together a bit more, probably. Yeah, yeah. You, you talk a lot more together. You share ideas more yeah, together. You don't yeah. you don't silo all your ideas and, and try and get a VC to raise money off it. And no, no. <laughs> but, but we adopted credit cards last year. There's also not a problem, right? <laughs> so I don't know. We start from Italy because we have we can reach people in Italy. But this is it's Marco over. Polo all over again, isn't it? You're gonna conquer the world from a. Uh, from a distance so no it's it, yeah yeah so i mean essentially what you have is you do actually have a structure a mental structure in place right now to actually yeah, well it's, it's very precise and yeah. i'm writing the proposal for the community and i say that's the, that's how i think it should work and people who have all the trips tokens so people like the historical uh participants the community they can vote on the proposal or they can make an alternative proposal. You, Richard, you could say, well, I like it, but I would do it slightly different, and you create a different proposal, and then people will vote, right? And whoever wins the vote, that idea gets implemented. And then everything moves on the DAO, because we, before building the DAO, we need to know how to build it. Then we build the DAO, and then the votes are going to be done not anymore by trips token holders, the old guard, but the new people getting in and, and getting the, the new governance token. Right, that's a bit the plan. It's complicated, but well, it's a balanced game, right? Yeah, no, I think I think that the the pain point has always been uh, how to get this flow of currency into a bank account when you have to pay a mortgage or a loan or or your bread, because there's always been this this challenge. You know, I've got cryptocurrency this side, and all these really smart guys, and I've got somebody over here who's well. I want to stay for three months. I know I know nothing about this at all, but I really want to book it. 
can I use my credit card? Well, no, you, you, you can't. You, you can only do it this way. And that, that's always been a bit of a, a friction point because you've still got to remove the friction. So this, this, um, this education, this process flow has got to be very simple to allow people to do it. And, you know, and, and throwing in words like DAO and day finance and uh, blockchain yeah. and cryptocurrency and everything, just people just will initially, yeah. there'll be more friction. Whereas in the future, then, hey, kids will go to school and they go, I know all about that sort of stuff, you know. <laughs> But I guess this is something that's going to happen gradually and eventually because, for example, already now, if you have, say, say you are one of those lucky guy who invents, invested in Bitcoin in the uh, 2008, 2010, and now you have a bunch and you don't know how to spend it. Uh, very simple. There are a lot of credit card companies now that uh, give you a... Uh, uh, your credit card backed by Bitcoin and you can go in any store and pay with that credit card which is issued by Visa or MasterCard uh, on any of the major circles and you're actually paying, uh, you, you have a, a small share of commissions uh, which is, let's say, uh, about the same amount that you would have with a credit card if you were a dealer and you can pay with your crypto and of course you can do all, also the same thing uh, the other way around. Uh, we have this nice news in Italy uh, this week or last week where we had the first Ferrari who was bought and paid fully in Bitcoin. So, I mean, uh, now we can pay Tesla, so we can pay Ferrari. <laughs> we can pay our uh, mochas and cappuccinos and lattes with a credit card. So the thing is, um, you don't actually need to have a, a shop or a, or a retailer that accepts Bitcoin directly. Uh, even if a few are there, uh, there are uh, some who just do it for, mm, let's say, uh, get a bit of uh, uh, word of mouth around. Uh, but actually what they do is they receive your payment in Bitcoin and they get credited fiat money. Uh, so, uh, I mean, we have so many di different types of uh, payment gateways that can cross the two, the two worlds and two technologies one way or the other. So this is absolutely not an issue. And it, to make things simple, it's just like uh, when you go to any uh, e-commerce and you are given the opportunity to check out paying with uh, your credit card or with PayPal. And you, you have the choice. You have an opportunity. So one day, one day I guess, we will have uh, credit cards, PayPal, and this media, this uh, intermediary, this payment system, these other payment systems, so you just pick the one you like most. Uh, I've seen people who have a lot of fun when they can choose because they see, well, what is the cheapest way I can do it now? Because this fee is lower than this other one. So it is possible. Uh, I totally agree with you. We have to make things simple, smooth, very easy. But yeah, that, happen. yeah, and the... Um... The big elephant in the room always come is, is that uh, that word and you hate me mentioning Luca and that is marketing and exposure to to actually get traction and I do come back to that uh, I think the the market segment you've chosen is is obviously pretty smart because it's high value high value means more external referrals it means uh, greater searches so yeah and I think that would work pretty well as well for Mariah's type market as well for, for spin-offs into the, the same sort of model but different market segments too. There's a lot of uh, lot of discontent there for sure. So yeah, no, I think you've, you've got some ready-made marketing because of the value proposition as opposed to uh, you know downtown city center stuff for one night and things. So. Well, I know for a fact people, most people I know who want to book for a longer term, they go in Airbnb and then they try to get out of Airbnb. So this is what they do. And this is obvious because of this commission. So, and we're gonna try to give give them an alternative, which is more comfortable. Like instead of browsing a thousand apartments in a place where maybe a hundred are more or less welcoming or compatible with your need, you're gonna have only a hundred or maybe 50, but they're all of them compatible. So th that's kind of the approach here. Yeah. So time scales. Oh, time scales. Well, um, we need at least a week to make the first governance vote. So I'm, I'm pretty ready with the first, you know, structure of the, of the uh, proposal. 
we give a week more or less for voting and then the installation of the DAO it's, it's basically done it's there already I just have to see what we decide and then maybe tweak it a little bit building the DAO was very fast because it's open source free software it's, it's based on Aragon is one of the many DAO softwares out there and this is the maybe the, the, the most you know, advanced at the moment and, uh, and then we start onboarding people and teach them how, how to get in. So a few weeks, I would say. And the, the booking platform is, is there already. Uh, again, it's, it's not a very nice one. Maybe we're gonna decide whether that booking platform is not good for us and we're gonna use another one. But again, let's, let's do this together in the, in the DAO. Let, I don't wanna decide this for everybody in advance, right? So we start from here, we move to the DAO and then we take decisions over there. That's good. And worst case scenario, we don't get a booking for the next 20 years, but we learn something. And then everybody who gets in has, has learned how to deal with the, what's coming because this stuff is coming. I mean, there's no way, as Marco was saying, we don't need to worry too much about fixing all these friction points. They're being fixed by the market every day. And the speed is amazing, right? So we just have to position ourselves and adopt these new technolo technologies and solutions and design as they come along. So it's more like uh, we know what's coming. That, that's our hedge. I mean, this is crystal clear. It, it's, it's obvious, right? We don't know exactly how and when, but we know what's coming. So we position ourselves in a way that, uh, that we can absorb all this, all this change coming up, right? And, if before doing the DAO that was only theoretical, now that we're going to do the DAO, we're going to put a little bit of money into it. That's that's practical, and I'm sure people will love this. I mean, you're going to be part of something really, really powerful in the future. Yeah, it's like a big, it's like a surfer waiting for that massive wave which comes once every hundred years. Yeah, I, I refrain <laughs> from the surfer metaphor, but that's the most that's the most um, yeah powerful one because yeah. when when you are surfing, you're not spending a lot of energy you are just just a a, a quick you know uh, you need a bit a lot of energy for a very short time to go on the on the wave but then it's, it's all the the ocean and you can't go against it and you can't ignore it uh, or like if you go against it you're done right if you go against the wave you're done if you ignore it you're not gonna move uh and if it's a tsunami you're gonna be crashed so it's better to be in the sea ready to ride the tsunami than on the beach looking at the tsunami yeah. and our role here is that guys get in the water before the tsunami hits you because this tsunami is much bigger than anything else you've ever seen a bigger than any corporation you've been considering as unbeatable right it's the same thing happened with the pre-internet companies they were oh you know kodak oh whatever you know i don't have names now they they seemed unbeatable and they're gone the internet killed them now the internet rules right so our role is um you know i feel very comfortable in doing that because it's not the kind of thing where you have to pay money and then you have to get something in exchange which maybe comes you're gonna get something in exchange which is worth 10 times more guaranteed as long as you put a little bit of effort in learning right because what we're doing here is sharing knowledge and learning together and starting a a journey together right yeah mark you're gonna have thousand people wanting to know how to set up a wallet all on the zoom call at the same time it'd be awesome yeah. i hope so i hope so I, I made quite a lot of videos uh about that so i mean um uh, I'm, I'm giving out advices for free uh i've been doing that for the last three years so i really believe this is something that uh people need to benefit from so this is why I do what I do, um, because I, as I totally agree with Luca. This is going to happen. I don't know if it's going to be a tsunami. I don't know if it's going to be like uh, uh, the raising level of the sea in Venice uh, uh, or uh, you name it. But I, I totally agree that um, things are changing and things are keeping changing faster and faster. And we also had this. Um, all of me to call it like this, all of me to say COVID was a nice opportunity, was a great test for a lot of the reality that we 
thought we were living on and that we took for granted that just wasn't so. And one of the things that stood, I mean, one of the things that kept things moving was the internet, was shopping online, was everything that is digital, was all the things that by nature are made to be re resilient. Uh, internet did work during the COVID because it was born and was made to sustain atomic attacks and it sustained the, the, the COVID-19. Uh, blockchain is made to sustain hacks from inside, not from only from outside, also from inside. And it worked and it kept moving. And it showed that when you can't do one thing in a traditional way, you have to find a new way to do things. Because otherwise, as, as Lucas said, if you stay on the beach and you expect something else to happen to save you, to rescue you from the things that are happening, uh, probably this is not going to happen. And if you, um, allow me to quote Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos said, kill your business every day. Try a new way to make your business in a better way. Because if you don't, your competitors will. And that's what's happening. Yeah, there's always sharks in the water. Well, in terms of resilience, sorry, taking taking a bit more time from you guys, but in terms of resilience, what we're doing is extremely resilient because let's say that what our DAO becomes stagnant or controlled by some people who are bringing in the wrong direction. You just spin up a second one. You, you learn how to do it and you create a second one and there's no mold. Uh, people who like your idea will jump from one to the other or stay in both. And we may end up with 10 different DAOs and 100 different booking portals. We don't know. Maybe it's going to be on one DAO with one booking portal, or maybe it's going to be much more uh, fragmented. But because the, the data is in everybody's hands, fragmentation is actually good. It needs resilience. It's like it, 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 whole, it's a concept which cannot be killed, right? So resilience is a very important point also of the DAO. And that's why we don't want central central points of, of failure where like we we accept fiat we put in our bank account and then maybe the you know the company fails and everything falls down we try not to touch fiat uh, i don't know how clear it is we will not touch money the money is going goes from people in the center and we all together decide how to move it and no i, I can't take touch this money that doesn't work i have no power to to move one euro out of this because technically i can't and that's difficult to understand if you haven't done it but once you see this happening in the DAO, then oh, you're like, wow, so un endless possibilities, right? <laughs> uh, guys, let me just yep. uh, read a few questions from from YouTube, uh, and then and then we can close. So Fabiano is, is oh, basically only Fabiano saying this is what one guy who uh, got into into uh, trips a few months ago has been very very uh, active, and is is from your region, Marco, around around Lombard. So a lot of new ideas, improvement, proposals, and skills will grow from inside the community. Uh, and we've seen this in, uh, again, in Sushi. Sushi Shop was very clear about that. Like people start putting ideas out there because they, they don't feel like the, the idea is, st is stolen by somebody else. It's given to the community. They are part of the community because they own the tokens. So the sharing of ideas is it flows much better than probably in a company where there's politics. I'm not going to tell this to my boss because my boss is going to say it was his idea, stuff like this, right? So that's one thing, and I agree. I'm going to read through them, then if you want to comment, please. Uh, well, the second one is the same. The, the, the second, the third one was like the governance token, which I mentioned, may have a secondary market. Uh, because I said this token won't have value, but it's actually true because I have no control. Richard puts 100 euro and he gets tokens. Richard is free to create a market on, Uni, on Honeyswap or Uniswap, whatever, for, I don't know, put a pair between this token and Trips or this token and DAI or this token and Ether, whatever, and people can trade it. There's no way I can stop that, right? So it may have a secondary market. Actually, probably it's gonna have a secondary market because in crypto, everybody likes to sell and buy, right? So, it, and that's interesting because that absorbs the value of the DAO itself separated from trips. So it's, it's very, it's going to be very interesting. Any comments on that? 
Yeah, I mean, I think Marco's going to have a much bigger comment than me, but I mean, I've been sitting here with Binance watching ETH go down all afternoon uh, and all these people trading oh, been liquidated. on a minute-by-minute minute basis. <laughs> and uh, and I, I don't think you can avoid that. Uh, I also think it's probably a really good thing because although it's everybody's betting against each other and they're only doing it to like, like gambling, it is bringing awareness to what's going on all the time. And, you know, the old adage, yeah, you know, any news is good news it is, a, is a good thing to do. I just think at some point it, it might need corralling into something more structured by the community themselves as well. But at some point in the future, I'm sure Marco's got a lot more thoughts on that. Um, what I will say is let's experiment. Let's give it a try. Let's test it out. Let's make mistakes let's do things uh, because we have the chance and opportunity to even get the right answer, even do the right thing, even get it working. And if we don't make it at the first time, who cares? Uh, we can do it all over again. We have more experience. We ruled out one way of not doing things and we can have the opportunity to make it better the second time. Uh, what I think is, I, I'm all in favor of new project, uh, even if uh, I know there is a, a fair share of the crypto community that says uh, there's no point in trying to do this, there's no point in trying to do that. We already have figured out whatever is good to do with the blockchain or not. Um, I don't agree with that. I think we are still on the early days of this technology and we still have a lot to learn, even those who think they already got it all. Um, let's make it. Let's just just try, just try. And I think a little bit of action works more than uh, so many thoughts and so many meetings with so many gurus and a different point of view. Uh, let's try things. Let's put things on the ground and see if they move. If, if they move, let's try to see. Uh, why and how to make it better and go step by step. Let's evolve things. Okay. I agree. Perfect. So, yeah, last question was when Lambo, because you mentioned that a Ferrari was sold, but it's actually <laughs> funny that a Ferrari was sold. They should have sold a Lambo, yeah. make, you know, to make the whole story round. And they went for a Ferrari that was a, a disgrace. <laughs> well, we, we, we've got uh, one of those... Um, Tesla's from Elon Musk that is uh, running around uh, Mars. Then we, we have the, the um, Perseverance who landed last time. So yeah. we have a lot of way to go. Uh, um, let's pack together all the, 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 the means that we have to move because there is a lot of road to cover. Uh, we yeah. just started this thing. So uh, even if you just got a bike, grab that bike. Good. Great. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. That was really, really nice. Thank you, Richard, for proposing this call and thank you marco for joining on such a short no short notice actually and uh, all right next step i'm gonna publish this proposal and anybody who has trips can vote you two guys have trips maybe mark you don't have that but you have a right yep. to them because you never gave me an address but as soon as oh. you give me an address you're gonna get you're gonna get the trips because you helped and, and i made, if, I made enough fun, to use swap straight away to start trading mike <laughs> say again I said i'm heading off the uni swap straight away Okay, that's okay. That that's in your right, no problem. No, no so no. so yeah, and uh, and then we are gonna vote and see see where it goes. Let let's as Mark is saying, let's 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 do things and see what comes out. We're gonna learn and have fun. In the Thanks, Luca. It, it was nice to get a good explanation and understand you know the bigger picture and the philosophy and the strategy. And I think we all need to go and start buying some surfboards and start paddling out now. There you are into yeah. the waves. My pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everybody's listening to and see you next time. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.